Hey, well, let's let's get started. We've got a few people joining us now, and it's lovely to see you all. So this is the first Snap Dance Month. We're running it with the Staff Room Unconference series. Um, this may be the first of many, or it may be a spectacular car crash, and it might never happen again. So you're either here first of many, or the only one. So either way, that's that's quite historic in itself, um, and certainly calls cool to celebrate by sharing our favourite apps of each other. Um, I was saying to Martin and Karen earlier that I spent my whole day getting WebEx set up and trying to figure out what on earth is going on, to the point I've not actually considered what I'm going to share myself. So I need some time to think about that. Hopefully other people can share as well. If you want to take part, jot your message in the chat, or I might just pick on you randomly because I know that a few people got that they want to share, or that they're being forced to share by me. Um, and we'll hopefully get that working as well. And on the screen at the moment, you'll see a quick guide to doing some screen sharing. So on WebEx, you can um, share your screen with us and then hopefully you can talk through your app you're welcome to share an app that you enjoy even if it's been smashing apps before you can repeat an old app or if you've got a tip from an app that you're using maybe a handy shortcut or something that you think other people might not know about this is a place to share ideas and, and hopefully to have a bit of fun for the next half an hour or so. um, i'm wondering philip if we can actually go straight to you who's just put a spoonful of food right in their mouth <laughs> That, would that be the time, do you reckon? Yep, that's fine. Um, so Phil will show I, actually, I actually only got home about 40 minutes ago, so I've been sort of rushing to try and get sort of sorted, ready for this. So, yeah, well, done. Let, let's get started. Let's see if I can figure out how this WebEx thing works. Whee! Look at that. We're loving life. Okay. Um, the app I'm going to show, actually, I think... Uh, for me, it is one of the most underrated apps. I, I don't see many people use it. I don't see it pop up on um, uh, Twitter much. But I, I quite like Reality Composer. Um, so Reality Composer, for those of you who don't know, uh, allows you to create uh, ability, uh, allows you to create uh, different materials and then test those materials out in an AR way fashion so for example here I pause you real quick yeah you not disturb for me just so i don't need to edit out all those children's names so they can't on the screen i will do that there we go work at the sorry they're, they're, they're still working as you can imagine we are very dedicated children um, so for this one for example i set this up for actually for my year twos and my year fives and sixes um, for my year twos, we were doing it as a demonstration of the strength of materials. So, for example, I set up a ball, I changed the material, and I changed what the material colliding with was. So this was to test their materials. Obviously, if I was in class, I could have done this with the materials itself. Um, I couldn't do that because we were all separate and they were scattered all over uh, my town. So this was a good way for them to be able to see it and visualize exactly what would happen. Uh, so in this case, uh, I've got it set as concrete and plastic. Okay. Um, with the idea being that the ball can't make it through, the material is not strong enough to make, uh, to break through that, that concrete, concrete being a strong material. Um, and then what happens if we knock something else against it, say concrete? Uh, so the idea being that the children could see that certain things were stronger than others when we were designing our own buildings. What materials do we use? Um, we then had a bit of fun with things like lead. Let's go the whole way through. Um, and th th what this allowed me to do was to, particularly in our, our distance learning setting, um, was demonstrate to the children the strength of those materials without requiring them to have them. And that was the, the big thing for me, is I wanted them still to be able to experience it, but I needed to find a way for them to be able to experience it and to see it visually. Um, I then did a similar thing with uh, Year 5 and 6, only this was testing materials for building constructors and then for forces, because we were doing uh, Newton's laws at the time. So we then tested various things. Uh, and, for example, with the ball and plastic and it bouncing off, what I asked him to do was record and describe what happened, what had happened to the forces as it hit that and therefore had bounced back off. Um, I also sent this to them. They've all got this on iPads and we had a little fun. Hopefully this will now work and you can also see my yogurt I'm eating. Oh, nice. 
Yeah, yeah. Hopefully this will now work. Never tends to work. Come on. Come on. We'll get a nice view inside my house, which is nice. Uh, and the idea being that we then set this up and I recorded this on my on my dining room table, on my school uh, table at school. And we were able to have a look at this as if we were actually in our classroom uh, experimenting with these materials. Again, it provided a really nice way for the, for the children to visualise all of this, to see it actually in action. Um, you, you may wonder why all the um, all looking gold. Uh, this is what the children voted for. They voted for them <laughs> to look like gold. So um, I did give them the option uh, and this is what they decided. Um, so in this case, of course, plastic, it bounces off. I asked them to explain that. Why does it bounce off, for example? Um, explain that using Newton's third law. And then again, with all the different materials, um, we also went in for our more, our higher ability again with lead, going through all the materials, why density and weight or mass um, uh, will affect these things or will generate a greater momentum uh, when testing these things. But it was, um, it was a really successful lesson actually to see um, them experiment with this. I mean, I got to send it out to the year fives and sixes uh, for them to have a go at this at home. And it, it came back with some really positive, uh, positive results. Uh, one thing I do also particularly like about this app is when you go to the trigger and action sequence, uh, a lot of the children initially were stumped by this until they realized that that's an input and a command. Uh, yeah. And immediately, and immediately the children went, well, I've got to put something in and then I need it to do something. Well, I, I want, want it to tap and then I want it to, to, to generate a force. And so it was quite interesting to see them uh, sort of tinker their way out of that one by realizing that actually it was similar to something they'd seen before. Um, but this app, I don't see it much on Twitter. And I think given the potential of it and given the, the fact that we have had to do all this distant learning, uh, it's been almost a shame that I haven't seen it as much as I have because I, I think there are, is real benefit to, to apps like this. Um, but that's, that's my app. So thank you very much, guys. Oh, well, thank you for sharing. I mean, that's that's an app that I've never really given much time to. I've, I've seen it on the iPad. I've kind of thought, well, maybe that's something we should look at. But to actually sit down and play with it, I haven't had a chance to do yet. And I didn't know that you could actually set actions and have behaviours and movement in the app as well. I thought it was very much, we're going to, you know, build a pyramid out of blocks and place it on the desk. So yeah. just interactive is, is remarkable. It, it is. I, I, I do think it is. Um sometimes quite under underutilized i mean it also links with a, an app called adobe aero i don't know if anyone's heard of, of adobe aero um again you can take what you do in, in reality composer and take that file and put it into something like uh, adobe aero um i haven't got that here but again it just gives it that extra functionality something else that you can do and again screen recording things like that putting them onto show be allowing the children to then take that screen record it record their voiceover explain it um it was it's brilliant yeah. but I, do, I do think there's, there's real potential with, with an app like this if we spend a bit of time tinkering with it and it is a bit complicated to get started with um but give it give it 10 or 15 minutes and the basics of simply getting something to move and building a uh, a simple wall uh, you can have a lot of fun with it and the children love it that's brilliant thank you for sharing that i'm going to give that a go in the morning because that's one that you've inspired me now to, to go and give a bit of time please to do. please do and post it on twitter I'd like to see more of it. <laughs> Have we got anyone willing to, to be the next guinea pig volunteer sacrifice to the Smashing Apps gods? Who can we perhaps maybe... Oh, um, come on, guys. <laughs> looking pretty keen there. You fancy giving this a go? Come on, Jacob. So are you keen, Lindsay? Sorry, I had to miss her back. Yeah, Trying to get the um, the thing downloaded on my iPad, the WebEx. Oh, okay. Martin, are you good to do a couple of minutes and then we'll come to Lindsay? Yeah, I can do something, yeah. I was trying to get a second device set up there, but I'll just try and do it from this one. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let's see if this works for me. Am I in? You are? Am I on? Yeah. So, um, I mean, this is probably not new to everyone, but this is an app that we've been using a lot in the last few weeks called uh, GoodNotes. Okay. 
<laughs> now on to the Good Notes 5. So lots of people are probably familiar with it. Um, but it's been sat on my iPad for about, well, the latest version sat next year, but I think I've had Good Notes sitting on my iPad for about two years, maybe three years now, and I've hardly touched it. Um, and in the last three months, I've used it almost every day. Um, and I've just found it's a really useful tool for creating content. So we've gone down the road oh, of pre-recording content for, for pupils rather than doing everything live. Um, just having the ability to bring in, and who knows what you're going to find. So you might have to do some editing here, Jacob. But um, if I bring in a, a worksheet, for example, I'll show you an example I've done. So, you know, bringing in a worksheet and just having the ability to start screen recording and using the laser tool, the annotation tools to talk children through a process and through a task. Uh -huh. um, and then, you know, perhaps showing some examples of how to set out work or how to complete certain tasks. Um, it's just been really useful just to actually give that kind of, you know, pre-recorded teaching content and explanation to children. Um, and I've just found it super useful and super easy to do content uh, and then take it to IMDb, you know, trim all my mistakes out, share it, it, share it really quickly through Shobi. Um, and it, it then leaves me with a workbook that I can then go back through and children come to me saying, oh, uh, I don't know how to do a question over here, I don't know how to you know, do this task, I can either, you know, talk you through the video I've sent them already or modify my, my video slightly. Um, but, you know, it's got all the features you'd expect. It's got your pen tools, your highlighter tools, your laser tools. Nice. So it's a really simple tool. Good Notes 5, I think we're on now. But just having the ability to, you know, almost create a notebook and then use that as a structure for a lesson, which I then use screen recording to create a clip and send sent to children so you know really simple but as so useful and so easy to use rather than trying to create my content from start in iMovie and time everything and time the the voice recordings to drop in at the right point to actually screen record and talk as I kind of I don't want to say make it up as I go along but um, execute my well-planned lesson <laughs> before sharing it with the class. So, you know, really simple. And of course, as you expect, you've got the ability to, um, I and mean, I've just dumped everything in one notebook and I've worked through it every day, but you can, um, you know, I love it because you can have folders and you can have folders within folders. And then there are lots of really nice, um, you know, templates and no notebook styles you can use. You can customize those. You can create your own page backgrounds as well. So that, for example, for my math lesson, um, I mean, this is how I tend to use it, a standard job. I'll prepare this lesson and over the course of a lesson, I'll talk to the children, I'll present this through AirPlay and talk through it. But also you can share that whole workbook as a PDF document. Um, so what I will do is I will package that PDF document, dump it into Shobi, and then as I'm working through and demonstrating, the children can be completing their own copies of the workbook within Shobi and then send them back to me. So it works really nicely alongside an app like Shobi. Um, mm. So yeah, I mean, it's not rocket science. It's I think particularly new, but it has been the one app that I have relied on more than anything in the last. That's brilliant, Martin. Thank you for telling me. Is that useful? Yeah, really good. Thank you. I yeah. I know I say it a lot, but I haven't ever used GoodNotes before. I've no. not actually seen it working. I think perhaps you're thinking people are using it a lot, but I'm, you know, definitely not one that I've come across before. Oh, really? And it looks really interesting. It looks like it's a really good canvas to do notes on. And like you said, the tip about using screen recording to record it as you're doing it live is a great way of then sharing that with your pupils, even when you but can't. A, yeah, I mean, it's a paid app. I think it's... I mean, it's not cheap, it's maybe eight or nine pounds or something like that. But I mean, the use I've had out of it, it's certainly been a good investment. The ability to export a, a PDF as well. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you. Lindsay, are we going to go with your app now, if that's okay? Uh, yes. So, 
Okay, so the app I wanted to share was something called Clone EDU. Um, it is a paid application. Um, and for, for those who do not know how to do like 3D design, um, I found this is really good because the idea is to place any type of three dimensional object on the surface and then scan it so that you can then generate either an STL file or an OBJ file or a USDZ file um, and then go ahead and put those into other things like reality, excuse me, like reality composer. Um, so you can have, for example, I'll just see if I can bring this one in. And so this is the sample one, which you can then attach behaviors to. Wow. And so it may start running in a minute, we'll see. Obviously, you can get you know, really quite close to it, but I I'm not good <laughs> I'm not good at um, 3D design or anything like that, um, which is why I've always sort of held off on Reality Composer. Um, but doing something like this, I mean, you can see some of the crude attempts I've had already. But this allows you to place anything um, on the map that they have, and then scan it, and it then will generate the file for you. So I've just pulled a little princess Lego character. Um, and these mats are free to download. You can make them quite small. You can make them quite large, depending on what you're scanning. And then as you can see, this dome has appeared on top of the character. And the idea is that as you move your iPad around or as you rotate the mat, it will start to generate an image of your character down in the corner. So I'll just go ahead and press the record button now. And you can see, I mean, I don't have the best of light in here, but as I'm moving it, some of the little sections are disappearing. Yeah. As it's generating the image. And if you can see in the bottom right corner, it should be starting to create a copy of it. So I'm just doing this very quickly, poor lighting, but you'll get the idea. You can see her generating in the corner there. And then as I move up and just start to rotate myself, it is a little bit finicky if you don't keep the QR code sort of squarely in the place. And that's why if you're doing a smaller object, a smaller copy of the map might be better. Whereas okay. I'm just using one for a larger scan that I did before. And then rotating through. Um, all the way around I mean, it takes a bit of time but as you can see in the bottom right corner it's generated a bit of a file um so if i just go back to one of my for example my terrible little guy here um i could put him into ar and just play around with him there or i can export him and then i can see all the different types of files that you can export this as so but making that leap from using pre-made content to generating your own content, but you don't necessarily have the time or the skills or the ability to know how to do 3D design. This is a good starting point where um, you can use things that you already have, or even to get little kids doing this, they could model something out of plasticine or out of Play-Doh, and then you can scan those in and then be able to attach behaviors to them in something like Reality Composer. Um, so that was the one that I just wanted to share with you guys. What was that app called again, Lindsay? So this app, there are two versions of it. There is just Clone and then Clone EDU. Clone EDU is the paid version. Yeah. Uh, and then Clone uh, allows you to do it for free, but it will not allow you to export the files. Okay. I've, I've never seen anything quite like that before. That, that's something that I've always kind of wondered if, I wonder if I could scan a 3D object so I could then do things with it, but that is absolutely incredible. My my first thought with that is we do a lot of um, Lego robotics with our children, and mm -hmm. it's always sad having to take it apart at the end of a lesson. So I'm, yeah. I'm now thinking, imagine if at the end of the lesson they could put it on the little mat, and they could get a 3D model of their Lego robot, and then in the future they could put them all together in one document and have all their creations from the year in 3D in front of them. That's like the future. Exactly. 
bringing bringing all these things together and the fact that they can make them and share them um, in very common files is is fantastic. So that's something I really liked about this. It's that step up from just using pre-made content, but also the step down from the full 3D design element. So yeah, thank you so much. Have to go, but thank you for letting me share. And it was good to see you guys. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thank you. Fantastic. Looking at the chat there, the amount of people saying brilliance and amazing. That's excellent. That was really good to, to see that. So thank you. So we'll, we'll do Emma and then Karen and then we'll call it a night for tonight. Um, and if Karen can't go, then Emma, you're the grand finale. So just, you know, pitch your app appropriately to be the grand finale. <laughs> okay. So what I want to show you is something that our teachers at our school, um, they had to learn very quickly. So we were given three days from when lockdown started to create content for our children. We needed a really, really simple way of getting our faces on the screen and um, teaching content at the same time, you know, in an engaging way. And yeah. the teachers didn't have time to learn lots of new apps that are out there. And um, so we went straight to Keynote. And then we found this really amazing idea where you could just actually have your Keynote presentation on the screen and then by using split screen, open another key, and then using the camera tool, you can have the teacher's face on the screen. Ah. Can you see my beautiful slippers? <laughs> ah, there I am. So I can have my presentation on the screen and then I can speak to it so the children can see my face and the presentation same time so the teachers did that because we we're going with a blended learning approach so our content is pre-recorded videos so this is where a lot of our teachers started so, a little tip in keynote to brilliant. record your face and your presentation at the same time brilliant that's super helpful and that's something which a lot of teachers i'm sure watching this will think why didn't we think of that before because that makes life so much easier doesn't it that is the best thing i've heard or seen in three months <laughs> You've no idea how much that's going to change my life. <laughs> and that right there is a power. I'm so glad to hear that. I'll one take all the credit for that. <laughs> really is an excellent, excellent tip. Well, I think if it's okay with Karen, we'll wrap up with you now. I don't know, I can't see you on the screen. But I'm hoping you're there, ready to jump in and. and Hello, ring yes. With... Hello. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen now. So give me two seconds. Can you see my screen now? See your screen, and we can hear you. Perfect. Okay, so I wasn't going to present anything, so this is thrown together very quickly. So it's not amazingly exciting. That's definitely <laughs> um, so I'm, I can. I'm going to show you a little app called Mentimeter. This is what it looks like if you use the app, but I am going to show you how you use it as a teacher. Okay. So you go to Mentimeter.com, and within this, you can create lots of different presentations. So I am going to create one called What Did We Think of Smashing Apps? So this can be like a as the kids are leaving the activity or if, if they're you know, wrapping up a session, like a kind of exit ticket thing. OK. So that's my Mentimeter created. Then I'm going to use WordCloud as my option. And you can choose how many words you would like your participants to put in. You can decide if you want to profanity filter, which is quite useful, and how many times you want them to be able to have a go at adding to it. So you guys are going to help me. I'm going to hit present. You can grab a device and go to menti.com. Yep. And use the code 398495. And just it's type. For live feedback, whilst the host is here. <laughs> yep. Tell everybody how Jacob did at Smashing Apps. <laughs> Okay, so enter code. Three nine eight four nine five. Nine five. Oh, enter a word. Yeah. So that's where you tell me what you think. Hopefully, other people are doing this too, so we get lots of words. <laughs> if I just put in five really positive words, that's going to look a bit suspicious. Yep. <laughs> Everything will be positive. Whoa. 
handsome. <laughs> That's really quick, isn't it? Yeah. I'm waiting for some more good words to come in. It is so cool. I love this. I love this can. It's nice, isn't it? That's really, really nice can. Thank yeah. you. So you use that, I guess, in class, like you said, for an exit ticket or yeah. to answers to a question you're posing, perhaps. Yeah, and there's lots of other options in there that you can choose. There's like multiple choice questions. There's a whole ream of different. It's not just word clouds. You can do a whole lot of different options in there as well. But oh, wow. I'll screenshot that for you so you can keep a little record. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I've not come across that at all before, as with many of the other apps we talked about tonight. But already you can, I can think of ways that that could be used in a classroom. Maybe in a literacy les lesson, you're thinking about descriptive words and the children can all throw some together and put them on the board or if you're doing a math question you can you know, throw the answers out together and, and see what the general answer is. That sounds really powerful. That's good we have. Well look, thank you for, for jumping in last minute and sharing that as well. I know you weren't necessarily prepared until I kind of forced you into it before we started recording so I really appreciate you you taking the time to do that. It really is lovely to see all these different apps and thank you all for coming to join us on this um, Shambolic, I don't know. Exciting, informative, excellent, handsome <laughs> for you. Um, for this for this first episode of Smashing Apps Live. Just to recap, we've heard about Reality Composer, we've heard about Good Notes, we've heard about Clone, 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 Keynote, and Mentimeter. So we've had five great apps, loads of things to think about, and hopefully a bit of fun along the way. So thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Um, if you weren't able to watch this live, you can watch it back on YouTube, hopefully with some of the bits cut out in the middle. Um, and yeah, lovely to see you all. Have a great evening and we'll speak to you soon. Bye Jacob. Love well done Jacob.